Okay, good evening uh, everyone and welcome to tonight's um, Infrastructure Safety and Growth Scrutiny Committee. Um, I'm going to kick off with item one, which are apologies. Um, just to note, firstly, um, that um, following Councillor Martin Summers' uh, appointment to Cabinet, he's no longer a member of this committee. Um, and just would like to say thank you for his, his work on the committee. Um, we have apologies from Councillor Ben Price and Councillor John Chesworth. Um, do we have any other apologies? No. Okay. Um, we'll move on to minutes. Um, the 19th of January meeting was the was the last um, formal committee meeting. So happy to uh, move, Chair. That moves the business along. Thank you, Simon, and Rosie second. Thank you. All those in favour? Excellent. Thank you very much. I will um, we'll sign those off. Item three are declarations of interest. Anybody got any declarations they feel they need to, um, to mention? No? Great. So item four is an update from me. A um, couple of things to mention. Um, one, we had our community safety focus day yesterday, uh, of which a number of us um, managed to, to attend and we had presentations from Police, Fire and Rescue Crime Commissioner uh, Ben Adams and we also had the um, Police Commander Chief Inspector Rob Neeson and another one of his colleagues Stuart Coleman. Chris Beckett um, was, was around and also Joe Sands. Um, and we had a wide-ranging discussion. Um, I think it was very useful. Um, I'm, I'm, I am courting some some comment from members that were were there and also officers. See if we can make that that session better in the future. I think we will have a similar session again. Um, it, it, it was. I did feel it was a useful. Um, a, a useful session. Um, if there's any any other comments from from councillors at the moment, I'd I'd happily take them. Tina. Yeah, I think it was um, a useful session. Um, there's so much we can talk about community safety, police and crime, um, fire safety, and everything else. And we try and shoehorn it into a meeting like this, and we don't always do it justice. I don't feel. Um, and also, we're asking you know, officers and the police to, I know they're a 24-7 service, but you know, I'm sure the commander's not there 24-7. Um, and we're also asking officers to stay later. And we don't always get the, the, the best out of those um, discussions as we, as we did yesterday. I feel that, I felt that it was a very open discussion. And I think we got very honest answers back, especially from Ben, um, uh, the, the commissioner. I know that there was a bit of you know, not a, a bit of disagreement on his, some of his answers, and that was to be expected because, you know, we we're seeing it real time, um, and and maybe um, the commissioner isn't, and and that's no disrespect to him, but you know we have to feedback what we're getting from our residents, and and we know how that can be, how that can come across sometimes as councillors. So for me, it was a well worth exercise doing. Um, I just wanted to place on record, chair, that. You know, Joe put um, our scrutiny officer that's here tonight put so much work mm. into doing and getting it off the ground, and and getting the right people at the right time. Um, it was the first time we've done it. There are a couple of tweaks I would make, um, only because of experience from County Council, but it was the first time we'd done it. I thought it was really good. It was relevant. It was on topic, and um, well done to to Joe and the team mm. for getting it sorted. Thanks, thanks, Dana. Um, Okay, just moving on. Um, the annual report of, of this committee is is currently. Um, Jay, can I just say I did put my hand up. So, sorry, Simon. I, I just thought we'd start. If we're going to ignore me, put my hand up during the meeting. Let me know, and I'll I'll keep doing it. So, sorry, I I missed you. But not at all. I I had a clear eye line. Um, yeah, just to say, Joe. I thought it was good. I do think, though, after all the hard work Joe did, that we should note that. And I've, second that point um, I would suggest however that we don't necessarily look at um, meetings that are scheduled to last four hours because I think there is an attrition during any meeting um, and I think two and a half three but 
having the commissioner and the police and then making this I think you made a sensible decision that we would not then take the final section from um, the the team of officers because that could be done at another time and I think that was right because I doubt they'd have got everybody's fullest attention as as we went into the fifth hour so I think I think that would be you know very sensible to have that and no doubt we'll discuss that again when we come to the work plan but I, I was very pleased that you know we got Ben to come and talk to us because it's only by going out into the districts and hearing how it's happening it, at the micro relatively micro level um, that he can see whether his policies and objectives uh, are following through and, and having the effect that he intends to have so uh, no I was very pleased and I thought the in the light of tonight's discussion the dis um, description of how town safe is working and how the um, business uh, support in that area was working was a timely thing in the background to what we're doing tonight thank you chair thank, thanks Tom um, yeah so uh, ju just moving on the, the the annual report of this committee is being drafted and um, that will be available for us before our, our next meeting in March, uh, I think it's the 24th. So um, obviously we have a, an annual report for, for, for each year and we, uh, on previous years we've, we've agreed that we, we get to look at that prior to it being presented to, to, uh, to full council and it gives us some opportunity to, to self-scrutinise really I guess. So um, that will be available for March. Um, the um, committee's recommendations on the fireworks will be going to um, full council on next week, on the 22nd. So, uh, so we'll be presenting that. Uh, and I don't think I have anything else as far as uh, my, my chair's update. So I'll move on to, to item five, which is responses to reports of the Infrastructure Safety and Growth Scrutiny Committee. Um, so, following the 19th of January meeting, we had the um, update on the Castle Curtain Wall um, and the recommendations that, that we um, that we resolved went to, went to Cabinet um, on the 20th of January, I think it was, and, and Cabinet approved those recommendations, part of the, the overall approval of the project, so, so, so that was good. Um, item six are consideration of matters referred to our scrutiny committee from cabinet or council and there's no new items on that so we're on to item seven on our agenda which is the substantive item and what we're really here tonight to to look at so this is the economic development service work plan and um, if you recall we we've scheduled this meeting so that we could get light of it and, and, and look at it before it went to um, Cabinet. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Steve Doyle, who's our portfolio holder, maybe temporary on this, on this item for the, for the, uh, for the moment. Do you know something I don't? Well, you, 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 <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just going off what what, what information is available to me, and um, <laughs> so so to introduce. That's an excellent way to start off. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Matt will take us through the report. It defines a three-year work plan with associated resources that address some of the key uh, council priorities. That it, it's intended to deliver a package focused on tour, tourism and economic development activity, primarily targeted at the town centre. Tonight, you'll cover the following items Staffordshire Destination Management Partnership Town Centre, and uh, a package of economic support, and a town centre business grant. Uh, one of the things I would say is um, every now and again, there's a report that comes along that contains quite a lot of detail and I tend to put them to one side and you'll have seen me do this before where there will be several reports that tie in together quite nicely and uh, provide an awful lot of information on a particular subject. Now I'd advise you in terms of the town centre and that this is one of those reports. There's about seven pages of information, there's an awful lot in there 
and as you go forward, I dare say you'll find that useful. And um, I'll end my speech there and hand over to Matt. Good evening all and uh, thank you very much for the uh, invite and thank you Councillor Doyle. Um, first of all I'd like to say thanks for inviting um, me along and uh, my Assistant Director Anna Miller to talk about this subject. I think um, from, from my perspective it's great to have the opportunity to um, highlight an area that I think perhaps over some years hasn't uh, been as looked into as others and it, it's a great opportunity for me who's very passionate about this to come and explain it to you all and like Councillor Dahl says um, it's a very um, detailed report because of the nature of what we're proposing and some of the changes so hopefully I'll be able to answer um, any questions for you um, in detail so <clears throat> Basically, I think um, we all know the situation that um, our high street is facing, both from a mixture of uh, the pandemic from the last couple of years, the general um, decline of high streets um, across the country, um, but also um, as a sign of both recovery out of the pandemic and also um, the investment that town centres are getting, non least our own with the investment of the future high street fund. So with this in mind, um, some of you will be aware my scope of services uh, covers everything from physical regeneration to economic development to tourism strategy right through to um, the market town centre car parks um, and um, street trading policy so i've got a diverse uh, portfolio and this is one of the key strands so um what what we're focusing on this is um, very much aligned to the time period of the Future High Street Fund is a three-year programme of support that will um, assist in the development of tourism for particularly for the town centre but focused across the wider borough uh, bearing in mind that m most of our tourism attractions are just either in or just around the town centre and then a very specific body of business support work focused on businesses in the town centre because that's where the highlighted need is. That isn't to say though that other business support activity will stop, this will just be the priority for the next three years based on the situation that we're facing. So um, in terms of that, as Councillor Doyle said, there's a breakdown, the way I'm going to approach it tonight to describe it all is there's two themes which is um, tourism and heritage development and then the town centre business support program so just to um, just to give you a little bit of context um, there's we, um, to deliver um, this work stream at the moment um, we've got two full-time officers um, who are permanent um, we've got a skills officer uh, that's part-time that works across in Staffordshire and that contract ends in March and then we've got an economic development assistant who's full-time but their contracts only till um, the end of March next year so 2023 so some of this looks at how we'll resource that so in terms of um, in terms of if we just take uh, tourism and heritage development um, there's a couple of um, streams to this. So one of the main things is that um, back last year we were approached by the um, County Council to um, look at um, supporting their reinvestment into the Staffordshire DMP. So um, this is something that the County Council has run um, for a number of years and um, like many authorities um, there's a renewed focus on tourism. Um, because I think we all know out of uh, out of the pandemic everyone wants to get out and it, have experiences and do things rather than be at home so um, one of the one of the sort of key factors of this is um, a contribution that's, um, of 15,000 pounds per year to the um, Staffordshire destination um, management partnership um, which will um, basically um, support us with targeted marketing and campaigns to help maximise Staffordshire's profile and the respective uh, contributors to ourselves, um, support the commissioning of research and intelligence that might allow us to make decisions and we've benefited from th that, things like that in the past where we've had hotel studies and so we can understand potential take up and demand whether we need new hotels, what our suppliers etc. Um, lobbying and advocacy work around key decisions around tourism so with such bodies such as visit england um, and then um, they may develop in conjunction with the partners any form of specific tourism related business support activities and in the past they've run things i think um, from memory with agencies like circo and things like that through european fundings at the time that upskill tourism type businesses um, so that's the um, first 
um, action. The recommendation at the moment is that um, we contribute for the first two financial years and then review that after um, at the end of year two to see how that is and then make a um, decision on that dependent upon success. Um, so that's what's being uh, proposed. Um, one of the one of the key sort of problems we've got at the moment is you know is is understanding what tourism means for us and what tourism should be for Tamworth Borough Council and the wider area. So um, what we're uh, proposing is a um, is an allocation of up to forty thousand pounds of budget to deliver. We we, we call it a, a strategy, but it's more I guess of an action plan, and it's more about focusing on what are the key things we. Um, you know, we can influence and support in the local economy to ensure that tourism activity increases. So that's not necessarily us doing everything. It's engagement with perhaps key businesses, um, key individuals, raising the profile. But it's also, I think it's also important to say this isn't necessarily branding or place. This is about key deliverable actions that we can do and identify what we want to do as a place to increase the tourism offer so that could be looking you know at what suite of materials we have available some of the channels we use to do that are we getting to the right people what what is the right um target market you know is it is it families is it overnight stays is it commercial tourism um which is going to be huge i think for the area as well potentially over the next couple of years with all the developments and developments in the area so there's a there's a real element of work there um with stakeholders so not at the council alone you know um to understand what tourism development actually looks like and i think um that's going to take a bit of time to pull all that together you know and i think with the dmp reinvigorating itself there's an opportunity there as well so there's a strong piece of work on that and then there'll be um there'll be basically um a small pot of money across the service of um ten thousand pounds per year to do small bespoke projects and you know we've seen things and these are only pure examples things we've done in the past around uh, improving the wayfinding so the signs in the town center different interpretation panels through the castle grounds and things like that but there they could be a variety of things really that that money could go to um and then basically what we'll continue to do is focus on stakeholder engagement and the different partners um you know to ensure that you know the the message and the actions that come out of the the tourism plan um you know are developed and, and delivered so um and we'll resource that but i'll come on to that at the end um so the second um the second aspect then is the town center business support program so um <clears throat> There's, there's two sides to this. Um, the, first, the first side is basically um, we're going to go out to externally commission some business advisors um, who will um, actively support town centre businesses in plans to grow. So um, what, um, what the intention is to do, um, we've been given... Um, sort of a high level objectives um, from cabinet members around three things which is to focus on attracting and supporting new businesses to open the town centre, encourage existing businesses to evolve, grow and adapt and then to encourage the diversification of business types in the town centre and there's a specific focus on food, hospitality, leisure and, and heritage and that's come out of a lot of sort of um, stakeholder engagement we've had right back since 2019 when we started the future high street fund project and right through the um uh, pandemic we've had a number of reports that have confirmed this both from the public and from local businesses so uh, we know we're on the right track with regards to that from demand um so um so basically there will be a very specific focus and resource for those businesses in the town center that want to grow um, we're purposefully keeping the sort of tender open at the moment in the sense of what that exactly will look like because uh, we've looked at different schemes around the country and really every town centre is different and every business is different so we're very mindful and we've taken a lot of advice on this from, from other places. We're very mindful that we don't want to stipulate exactly what at the moment what that business support looks like because it could we want it to be flexible we want it to suit the needs of the businesses in the town so there will be an element of engagement from that business support advisory service and my team um, in ensuring that basically we listen to businesses about what they want 
and then all and then try and address those issues and by listening to them find out what they actually need because they aren't often the same things and that's the skill you know a, a lot of what we're finding is sometimes what business tell us they they want isn't what they actually need to grow their business and that's the particular skill in a business advice service that's needed is the ability of someone who's had that and can do that and can convince the business that actually the right step isn't necessarily the easiest or um the the one ne sort of ahead of them so um so basically in line with that then um we are proposing that we will currently uh, cease the we've got small startup grants we'll cease those and particularly since the pandemic, we've seen those drop off a lot and also those that we're receiving. Um, the quality of those applications has diminished quite rapidly over the past few years. And the, the reason for that is that um, the employment market on the whole is relatively buoyant um, in terms of access to opportunities. And so the number of people seeking startup has um, dropped and that's quite a common pattern you'll see that through different um historical periods and certainly in my career here i've seen you know that um, at one point startup rates in tamworth were very low and then they increased and it ebbs and flows dependent on current need but um what what has been felt in consultation um is, is certainly that there is a direct need now for grants for town centre businesses to enable them to adapt to some of the changes both out of um covid out of Brexit, we're yet to see the full impact of that really, but also to adapt to the opportunities Future High Street Fund will bring. And I think that's the key thing. And I think we're we're already working with quite a few businesses on some of the um, you know, outstanding COVID related grants. Um, so, you know, there is there is a clear um ambition in some of the businesses in the town centre to do something. And we wish we feel that's appropriate to support that with some form of grant funding so there'll be um so in in terms of those two aspects then um what we what we are going to invest is um there's going to be um, about fifteen thousand pounds per year into the business advisory service um and then about twenty five thousand pounds per year into the grants um on top of that again we've said what we'll have is some small th that 10k that will go across the tourism and and town center a business support program to support smaller projects so that's per annum um, then so for, from my perspective um, in terms of delivery wise then we will also fund uh, extend one of my roles in my team by two years to the end of this three-year period just to ensure we've got enough capacity to support that um, so we'll we'll have effectively two in economic development officers um, who can cover the work stream and then an economic development assistant who can support that really so um i think i think from my perspective you know this is this is quite a large change in priority for my economic development team um you know it's certainly very welcomed and very needed from my respect and i think you know there's a number of other possibilities hopefully in the future things like shared prosperity and different changes like that that will also that could add to this quite significantly so i think by adding the capacity now and by looking at the focus town centers are only get going to get more focused through the leveling up agenda at the moment so I, I think there's an opportunity here this is the start of something um and hopefully by the end of the period come 2025 um the combination of all the work we're doing around physical regeneration both on gongate future high street fund um, the work we're doing to improve um, the car parks and the market and um, we're looking at street trading like I said I think um, my service um, with the support of um, Anna and many others is, is beginning to gear up for that crucial 2025 time where the town centre will be able to you know thoroughly come out of everything and out of all the redevelopment into something you know really hopefully fit for the future and sustainable so um and I, I sincerely mean that i think there's an excellent opportunity with this and i think you know this is part of the wider puzzle it's not the solution by any means but it is certainly a, a strong step forward so um i think i've talked it to death and i'm welcome to uh, take any questions Thank, thanks Matt. I just just I don't know if Anna have you got anything to add at the moment or perfect thank you um oh is that
Okay, thank, thanks, Steve. Um, questions or comments from anyone? Andy. Yeah, um, with the, the, the private contractor coming in to do the business advice service, you said that's there to support the, the current economic development team that's in place at the moment. Why can't the economic development team at the moment do that work? So um, the economic development team are, um, well, are, are project managers, I'd say, first and foremost. Um, so they're not necessarily, um, whilst all of them have, had, have done business advice, they're not trained business advisors. Also, they're not specialists in um, retail businesses. So the economic development team still has a wider portfolio than just business advice. So what the economic development team um, tends to do is um, a lot of the business support we've got is delivered by people like the um, Greater Birmingham and Solihull Growth Hub or the Solihull Growth Hub and what, what the team does is manage projects or contract manages those relationships to ensure delivery. So with a, what we tend to be is the first point of call for signposting and advice but they're not, the economic development team aren't business advisors and also so um, so we tend to we tend to go out and triage businesses about what they need and where they need to go to, but this is business support in town centres is a very specific um, yeah it's a very specific skill set. So the idea is that by marrying an experienced um, firm with our economic development team, they can upskill over that period. Um, but the the other the other side to it is capacity and as well as experience is that to do if they were to just to do that so over the three-year period they could potentially learn and be trained but then there'd be very minimal opportunity for them to do anything else other than that as well because you're saving time by buying someone in who knows what they're doing and have done it in other areas so we've seen this work in um, I think there's Gravesham in Kent we've looked at somewhere uh, and you know um, there's, there's different there's different people out there so I mean ultimately Ultimately, they could to do it, but the team is quite small. There's a broad focus, and I think um, I'm not sure if you look at the background information um, on the very last page. There's sort of a list of some of the things that are coming as well. I think if um, we ummed and ahed about how to do it, but the reality is we just wouldn't then have the capacity to deliver some of the other things that are coming as well. I hope that answers your question. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I suppose it does. Um, it's just that. There's two things for me. Is there is there a remit for the person to come in and deliver? Um, and secondly, as, as have we done some kind of cost benefit analysis as part of this work? So what 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 exactly do you mean by remit? Just if you well, in in the reported states, mm -hmm. you want to keep it very loose so that they can adapt. And I, and I kind of understand that, but the way I'm going with this, it, it does kind of feel like we're bolting another person into a team to undertake something that we don't really know what they're going to do because we've left the remit really loose and there's no real way of actually tracking outputs and understanding what benefits that they're going to bring. Right, okay, yeah, so apologies for that, um, given that misinterpretation. So the the, an the answer is that the tender we've already designed has a, um, a number of outputs and things that they've got to meet, but um, in fact, let me just find it. So the answer is, we haven't just bolted it on, and we haven't just um, we haven't just sort of said, "I'll come in and do whatever you want." We've got um, a full list in the tender document of what sort of things they need to meet. We just haven't had we haven't said exactly what that looks like in terms of numbers. So, um, the advice we were given from research, um, both with different councils and different providers, is that if we were to set um, a, a a figure, a budgetary figure, and then keep it relatively loose, albeit define the wider outputs, such as the bigger objectives. What we want to, what you'll get is a, is a bit of um, I'll use the word competition. You'll you'll get people come in and and say honestly what they can do for that money, so you get an idea. So this is always the problem with this sort of things. We can we can go out and then and you know in my experience of this, you can go out and you can say right yeah we want this for fifteen thousand pounds, but then you get someone back and go oh well we can't do that so we have done um, a fair bit of benchmarking we've also had um, you know our involvement over the last 10 years with the different LEPs has given us an understanding to what sort of consultancies cost 
and and the answer is you know we've set the the upper limit of fifteen thousand pounds because you're quite right what we want to do is test to see what we get out of it and we think that is a is a fair amount of money to set that um will give us enough we, we feel from our research it will give us enough outputs but um doesn't put us at any risk but you actually you, your point you made is it a bolt-on um to the economic development service yes yes it is it is a bolt-on because it isn't something that we can deliver um ourselves purely at the moment and in my field of work that bolt-on is extremely common um because what you do is um a lot of these schemes tend to be um tend to be funded for three years um through funding cycles and then they go and if they're good they get refreshed and if they're not they get changed into something else so th the methodology that we're using here is incredibly common across my field of work um you know because the needs of businesses adapt quite quickly at the moment we know for example a lot of businesses um need um support with digital marketing etc but um you know when i first started um, they all wanted sort of, um, you know, they all wanted business directories hand printed, delivered to the door, you know. So that's that's the sort of example we've given. So you, you're absolutely right in many of the contexts, um, but we have, um, you know, I should have explained more. So apologies for that. Um, we have got a defined sort of um, structure to what they need to deliver, but we've purposely, well, some of the outputs, but when we we are keeping it still loose so that. There's flexibility in there to meet the needs of the businesses. Is that okay? Yeah, I mean, I understand the flexibility. Obviously, you know, with the, with the economy as it is, we we don't quite know. And then there's a lot of paradigm shifts that come across, and they seem to shift, especially in town centres at the moment. We're seeing at the moment with um, less sort of um, 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 sort of the, the traditional shops that are seen in town centres more moving towards uh, restaurants, cafes, small businesses like that. Um, however, I just, I, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm yet to be convinced of the benefits um, because I understand that although it is only £15,000 a year, the costings that you, 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 that, that you were making, up, which I was quickly adding up, at, you know, added up to sort of £50,000 a year with the grants and everything else. And then on top of that, an extension to the two times economic development officers, the assistant, and then a private contractor with, with those on top. Now, I, I'd be... I, I'll be very happy to support that, but I, I feel that I would need a little bit more scrutiny on the on the benefits of, of of what that's going to bring into the town. I kind of feel like we might be touching and replacing, trying to replace a free market economy at the moment, where whereby sometimes the best, um, you know, the, the the best sort of economic advice that can be uh, advice that can be provided is is through the you know the invisible hand of capitalism, as as Adam Smith would say. So I do. I, yeah, I don't know whether we're touching on that, and I would like to see a few more, um, a bit, bit, bit more analysis around the the benefits that it's going to bring. I, I fully, I fully get your point on that, and I think um, so. My experience of of town centre businesses over the years is that you're right. There's there's an element of, there is an element of those certain businesses will always grow and will succeed and we're certainly at the moment what's nice to see in Tamworth is we're certainly starting to see a core of those grow and develop however um, as you've seen sort of mirrored across um, the wider sort of town centre landscape there are always those businesses that need support there always will be will be and you know certainly um, through my career here what I have seen is whilst some of the faces change it's the same people that come back for business support not in the town center i'll use this across the wider sort of more industrial is where we've done engagement before um because the successful businesses tend as you say tend to not want support because they know where to get that support from colleagues etc but there will always remain um, and there will always be a need for um, a helping hand, a guide, um, someone to snap people out of um, thought processes and just think slightly differently. And I think um, whilst I completely understand that on the face of this, um, the, the funding towards all this seems large over the time, that's, you know, in comparison with the future high street fund and what we're trying to do in terms of investing this into the businesses to upskill them. So these are skills that they will keep they will retain, they will profit from, they will hopefully then create employment. Uh, the street scene will hopefully um, 
feel nicer and tidier. All, all these things are significant things that we won't necessarily see until two, three years after they've had their investment because it takes a time. So, you know, to me, um, to me, what what town centre businesses are unique. Um, because a lot of them have survived for many years doing what they've already done. And unfortunately now in the current climate with social media as it is, that simply isn't good enough anymore. And a lot of those businesses that haven't adapted are simply nervous and just need support to do that. And sometimes the external side is better than the council because some of my officers have been going out to businesses at the moment and they've received very... Um, cold shoulders because we are the council so there is also a fact and in not all cases many people have welcomed officers in but some of them have been cautious because of the regulatory nature of the roles that we have to do and they feel that by exposing themselves and opening themselves up to the council they're going to get caught out in something which obviously isn't the case um, but you know sometimes having an external partner or person go in who can listen to their problems isn't judgmental can come to us and go you really need to do something here. We found that really useful in the past. So I'm sorry that's a bit of a long-winded response. You, um, you know, I hope that goes some way to addressing your concerns. Simon. Thank you, Chair. I think I think the point that perhaps comes out of what Councillor Cooper has said is that if you are in private industry, then you do a cost-benefit analysis based on the cost to you and the benefits to you. The difficulty with us is we always have to assess the cost to us, which we can write on a sheet of paper, um, but the benefits will be in indirect in the sense that one supports businesses which then pay taxes back into the government, into the council, but may in fact not, you know, it may be they employ more people and that money goes to the government. <laughs> it, you know, so it's not, it's not as easy to put those two together. But I think what Council Group said is very valuable because it, it reminds people that yeah, we are often asked to be the seed merchant, but we don't always know what the harvest is going to amount to. And I think that that's a difficult thing to make a, a difference between public and, and, and privately owned. My own questions, and they are plural, Chair, um, I'd, I'd like to take us back to the first recommendation, if I may. Um, this supports Staffordshire Destination Management Partnership. As a council, we're making additional provision because the to tidy the town up because the council, county council are reducing the money for grass verge cutting and things like that, um, which obviously is enabling them to then spend money on this sort of project. Um, my question is, we're right on the edge of Staffordshire. We have the snow dome, which largely, I mean, I was part of bringing it here, um, largely generates its own um, income and revenue because it's very well known already. Drayton Manor doesn't really need anybody to tell everybody that Drayton Manor exists, although you know, I'm sure they never mind <laughs> a quick plug. Um, what, what are we going to get out of this contribution and would we be better off spending it on additional grants? You know, in other words, would this money per year going into that fund do more spent locally rather than contributing to an umbrella? That's my, my first question, if I may, Chair. Um, I think that's a, a really valid question. Um, destination Management Partnership is something we've contributed to in varying amounts over the years. Th this is a much larger amount per annum than we have invested in that particular partnership than we have before. Um, so over three years, it would be uh, £45,000. And, and the recommendation is just committing to two years so that we can have a look at whether it is meeting the objectives that it sets out. Um, and some of those are listed on, on page two, right at the very bottom. It's about marketing, campaigns. It's about the county council looking at tourism of the county as a whole. Uh, and whether there's that scale um, can actually minimise costs across a larger area. Um, bringing they've got they've got those partnerships where they can bring the private sector investment in on that on a Staffordshire wide basis. Um, what they're going to do for us is going to come out over the next year or so, and we will, as officers, have to work with the county to define 
what it is they can do to support us. Um, so it's a bit fluid, shall I say, between us investing, them supporting, and us trying to help them, it sort of inform them as to what best to do for Tamworth as a borough. Um, I take your point though, we are, we are very small, um, opportunities for tourism are quite limited, particularly compared to some authorities across Staffordshire with you know, Cannock Chase or National Forest, Moorlands, etc., etc., um, Alton Towers, which obviously draws a large number of national people in, um, and all the tourist related activities that go on as a consequence. So it is more limited, which is why we're being a little bit more conservative um, in just. Uh, we've, we, we've budgeted for all three years, but we're saying let's take stock at two, um, probably one and a half, because the budgets get set, obviously before the end of the financial year, as you know. So um, we'll have to take stock and just and, and really assess whether it's it's doing the right thing for us. Steve, I think you just wanted to, to add in there. Yeah, I just wanted to add a little point. Uh, one of my uh, cabinet colleagues is actually looking at something similar in the private sector. Now they're asking between 20 and 25,000. One of the things that this does is, okay, we're only a small part of Staffordshire, but we are part of Staffordshire, and we should maximise that to the best of our ability. You talk about Drayton Manor. It's in another uh, part of the county, but it still sits within Staffordshire. Yeah, I know. But it's what you call it. No, no, don't get rolling your eyes. It's part uh, No more than you are. It's what you call it. It presents opportunities. We've got the opportunity of best practice across, uh, was it 10 um, boroughs in Staffordshire? Nine, actually. Oh, is it nine? All right. I'm corrected on that one. It's nine. But you've got the best best practice option. You've also got, have you ever seen um, what Leicester do? Go Leicester. I used to subscribe to that when my kids were smaller. It offers you a night out, a trip to an attraction, uh, I can't remember what the last one, or two tr uh, trips to a, two attractions and a night out, which for a young family is ideal because it only costs around about £100. Now, I've always been an advocate of having something like that for Tamworth. Let's use uh, the likes of Drayton Manor, offer them a night in Tamworth, stopping in uh, one of the hotels that we've got, or a um, um, meal at a restaurant, and then go... Uh, to Drayton Manor on the daytime with the family. Those are the sorts of opportunities this brings. We can work with others within the county, learn from them, and they can learn from us as well. And it presents opportunities, but we won't know until we get involved, more involved with them, and we will have to invest to share in that uh, knowledge and what's on offer. Thank you. And uh, going back to something that uh, Councillor Cooper says, this is more on the, the wider basis and long before I picked up this portfolio I've got a friend of mine that runs a business and he was in North Warwickshire. He kept going to them to try and get advice and guidance and in the end he moved to Tamworth because I put him in contact with Matt and he was that impressed with the level of service that he got in Tamworth. His business is now uh, located in Amington. So it's what you call it, we do a really good job. And if we can extend those abilities and extend our reach, I'm all for it. So that's me. Thank, thanks, Steve. Uh, I, think, I think that's, that's, a, that's a good individual news story, actually. I think, I think that's, that, that's really good. Uh, if I can just, just add on to what Simon was, 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 was asking in his question, I think, I think absolutely it's a, it's a valid challenge. And... Um, I guess it's that balance between, I don't know, having a a Tamworth advert in a in a in a in a large newspaper, or having our own newspaper, and how that gets, you know, where's the bigger audience kind of thing. Um, so I think it's a, it's an absolutely a, a, a valid a valid challenge. Um, Simon, do you want to? Well, I was going to come back, but the portfolio holder obviously wanted to add something so that was that was you know absolutely useful um the point that i would make is that you know we, we've heard tonight that this would help us attract um private sector funding on the assumption that we're putting in 15 grand and so are nine other authorities then um that's 
150 grand, let's say, if the county are, uh, equate to a tenth, p a tenth player. On that basis, even with 100% match funding from the private sector, and usually it's less than that, we're not talking about a massive budget for the whole of Staffordshire. And, and my concern is that it's not going to dribble back to us. And, th and that's why I've raised it. it. It's not that we can't learn from working with others. But my concern is if you look at, and I didn't say the tourist um, opportunities here are small, what I was saying was they're very specific. I'm also very mindful that at the GBS LEP, they did a survey of town centres, which they went to all the member authorities from Redditch up to us. We're sort of roughly two ends of the thing. And everyone was focusing on their unique town centre and their historic, you know, and when you read the report, it was like everybody had found their old building, their famous person, their, you know, and you did feel like, oh, my goodness, how are we all going to compete with each other, let alone with you know, Warwickshire or with um, Derbyshire or, you know, whatever. So I do think we've got to be careful. Um, and personally, I would be happier to see us commit to the first year with an early review as to what we're seeing as a comeback. Because I, I just worry that we're putting into the big pot, we're playing the big team, but we're not actually sure that we'll get this. And I don't think that changes the intention because we're just saying it's, it's not signed off for two years without a check. And presumably it would come back to this committee or similar committee to say well during the year we've done this this and this and we think that it is working or actually we're not sure it's working and therefore we we would suggest reapportioning the money but at least for the moment i would i would suggest that so i, I will uh, at an appropriate point move a recommendation to amend that um but i'm happy to wait till we've had more discussion on other points um i won't forget i'm sure you won't forget me um, but uh, I think that that's an, what I would say at the moment, bearing in mind, I think, was it 5,000 in the past we used to put in? Um, recent years have gone down to uh, £3,000. Yeah, so it is a five-fold increase in the amount we're paying. I, I remembered it being five or less, but uh, you know, I wasn't actually sure that the last amount, pre and pre-COVID, you have to kind of think about several years. and You know, even even I have to think about that. Well, for the moment, Chair, that leaves me um, finished on my questions, but obviously do feel free to bring me back in whenever it suits you. If there's, if there's no other, other... Steve, you want to just make a point? Okay. If there's no other, other people who w want to ask a question, I'm happy to bring Simon back in or Tina or whoever. I deliberately was offering it back through you so that you can vary the bowling. Um, I'll bring you in. Um, all I was going to say is um, small businesses, have you as you've mentioned, struggle. And we've all struggled in the last two and a half years. My business was closed for 17 weeks during lockdown. Not massively, but it was still closed. Um, when we look at how we are going to shout about the good things we've got here in Tamworth, and we have got an amazing castle but it's not the only thing I remember going to the garden party at Buckingham Palace and Prince Philip said to me oh the castle is still standing is it and he, he, you kind of think oh right well he's realised we've got a castle but you know we're not just Tamworth has a castle we have other things um, and what always strikes me is um, I do a lot of journeys especially in the summer days out and I never ever see anything about Tamworth advertised at the services. Wherever you go in the country, there's never anything. I see Alton Towers, I see um, Monkey, whatever it's called, Forest. Monkey Forest. Um, but I never see anything about Tamworth Castle, the Snow Dome, or anything else that we've got, the ice skating and stuff like that, or our Christmas markets and, and things. So. How do we get into that market? I don't know. I don't know how we do that because I'm guessing that there's a fee involved somewhere. There's always money involved. Um, but you know, they've all all these service stations have got these little stands advertising all these businesses and places to visit. But I never ever see it, anything about Tamworth in any of them. So that was the first one. And the second one is business tax business rates in Tamworth. 
would you agree that for a small business they're potentially way too high and I know that we don't control them they're government controlled but what are we doing about levying on that and 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 really fighting for a better business tax for people wanting to come and invest in Tamworth because as we said yesterday at the community safety inquiry if people invest in Tamworth it means they feel safe here it means they want to stay here they're going to buy a property they're going to raise the families and their kids are going to get educated here and again we start the circle so those are my two two points chair thanks Tina um Matt Anna so you know from um from a perspective you know I, I totally understand that business rates, particularly in town centres, is a is a national and significant challenge that I understand, um, you know, is being in being reviewed. And obviously, during the pandemic, there have been quite strong measures put in place for that. Um, you know, un unfortunately, like you said, you know, th th that that power to make that change doesn't lie with us. But one thing I will say is that Tamworth, in terms of um, a lot of our shop units you know the smaller ones certainly that would be suitable to um, s small businesses and to startups and the work that we will be doing as a council to bring in new spaces through the future high street fund you know hopefully will be designed with small business rate relief and things in mind you know and a, a lot of the smaller um, units a lot of the businesses don't have to pay um, rates because there is a rate relief but you know it is acknowledged and it's national um, research that you know, yeah, business rates contributions in town centres is something that doesn't necessarily reflect now the value that was placed on them. You know, and and the, there are certainly strong lobbying um, approaches uh, that can be taken to address that. And I think um, many of you will have seen um, that um, we've just been informed that um, the High Street Task Force will be focusing on Tamworth as one of their towns. And we're hopeful that that's something through that body uh, we'll be able to raise and uh, issues, but also more importantly, uh, learn from them, from their, you know, they're, they're certainly their, their research in their many places that they've supported, how they've overcome things like that. But I think, you know, certainly um, we can, you know, we can be mindful when we're um, developing and designing spaces that, you know, they're appropriate for small businesses in that context so yeah it's it is a challenge and it's and it's it's a very severe one because it you know a lot of people don't understand that they have to pay business rates and you know we we often have to um as a, as a team signpost people to that service but um you know um it's a fixed cost as part of operating out of a unit um on the whole Thank, thanks matt and um tina's first question about the the sort of more tourist information kind of aspect of things any yeah. any any comments on that yeah i think i think it, i think it's an absolutely valid point i think it's something that needs to come out of the um development of the um action plan we need you know one of the things we need to review is is you know what are the messages and you know as i sort of said earlier who we need to get to and then how we do that and you know fully agree and we need to look at the variety of what we do as a place and a council but also you know i, I think you've mentioned quite rightly a lot of a lot of places that market are private sector and I think we need to engage our private sector um, who can support us in using their profiles to raise the profile of Tamworth and then has a secondary impact you know on us and particularly the Snowdome you're quite right it's a national venue with national um, with national status and, and I think there is much more that could be done to leverage their support in promoting Tamworth as a tourism destination you know that, that then would support um, council-led activities such as the assembly rooms and the castle you know so I, I think you know this the approach to tourism is not one that the borough council should um, lead it, it should be actively involved with influencing key partners um, whatever they be and councillor people's point is is correct you know the, the DMP you know we need to really use that to our advantage to make sure that we get access to the sort of things we need to raise that profile whether that be access to relevant ministers visit England um, you know through that process so I think we need to to make the advantage of that in year one um, as much as possible so I hope that answers I, I think there's an opportunity to shape that Tina and certainly going forward we'd welcome member involvement in looking at how that develops Thanks, Matt. I know Simon just... Chair, on that specific point um, regarding the promotion of the castle and the things that Councillor Clemens so clearly articulated, over the last, I think, nearly 10 years, 
every year the castle has opted for the cheap distribution option for its leaflets that don't go into the services and that's been a consistent policy of the council to go for a cheap ha sort of hand delivered thing and funnily enough surprise surprise that doesn't get you in to the prime sites <laughs> it only gets you in so i think I, I i just wanted to come in on that specifically because actually that's within our power to make a decision that says no we're going to go to the one you know it, it's like saying well um you know i'm manufacturing uh, margarine and i'll only sell it in corner shops and i will not go down and put it in ventura you know well funnily enough you know that's where most of the people are so <laughs> you know you're not going to be seen so i do think that is something very specific that we can address is where we put our leaflets and that and that wouldn't take very much at all i think it was hundreds was the difference on that particular item but every year it's been chosen to go with option cheap rather than option um, bold Thank, thanks simon I, I, I think that that is a valid a valid point and and hopefully anna's going to come back with something on that say something sparkling um, <laughs> <laughs> i mean we haven't got a, a current tourism strategy across tamworth there isn't one that's why we feel we need to do something to, to draw all this all the strands together everything that's been said this evening they're all very good ideas but there's it's not coordinated in any way and what we did what we want to do is have a strategy or an action plan whatever you want to call it and a bit of a budget to go with it to, to implement some of it and that's really important and just to give you an example of how things operate on a tourist basis at the moment we've got visit Tamworth website assembly rooms website castle website yeah um, and I think there are another two. There's an arts and events website, and I think something else. All kind of doing something to attract people in with various activities. Because it's about arts and events as, as much as it is about going to a destination for a specific experience. It's all of those things. But at the moment, it's splintered across lots of different media channels, nothing coordinated. Now, maybe this is something that could come out of a tourism action plan. So we know who we're attracting, how we're going to do it. There's a single point of contact perhaps that does all of those things so people can really get a true sense of who we are, what we do and what's available and when. And at the moment, it's a bit fractured. Th thanks, Just Anna. as an example. Th th thanks, Anna. And I think, I think, I think that's, that is honest, very honest, actually. And I think we need, a, we need to imagine Tamworth as this destination. Imagine it. So I know Steve, you just w you wanted to, um, you've been waiting patiently, and perhaps the moment's passed. But I just do want to bring you in because I know you were keen to make a comment. It has a little, but yeah. it kind of ties into with the websites as well. I'll be honest, I've just took over this portfolio, um, and me and Matt have only just started working together. So there's a lot for me to learn. Despite being on cabinet, you aren't a master of everything, and you do tend to be focused on one particular area for a time. And I've been doing. Uh, community safety for about 10 years now so it is a change for me um, one thing that I am keen on and I've had it in the past with other portfolios is where you're presented with projects and everything and that and there's no actual metrics or accountability built into those um, when I was doing a, a particular part portion of one of the portfolios that was rampant it was one of the first things that I fixed and I actually went out to meet the people that we were giving money to so I could understand how it was being used and all that. And as we progress, it will be one of the things that I ensure is part of this portfolio as well. And as Simon says, being able to come back and give a regular review or update of where we are should be one of the things that we're capable of doing without any issues. So, but as I says, I've just started, so give me a chance. <laughs> It will be one of the things that are in there. We've got limited resources, and we need to maximise what we get for that money. So, thank you. Th thanks, Steve. Um, Simon. Thank you, Joe. If I'm not preempting anyone else, um, I, I agree with the extension of the um, member of staff's contract. That seems to make sense. That it, I think I think a theme which has come out of the last three scrutinies I've been at is that we are to so tightly resourced on uh, staffing that inevitably we are looking to go outside. And I think, 
your explanation to Councillor Cooper earlier about the fact that, you know, because funding has been three years of this and two years of that initiative, you know, people basically move around between councils doing similar work to whoever got awarded the, the months this time round um, or has decided to use it in that way. So I haven't got a problem with that. I couldn't see costing, which made me wonder whether I'd missed something <clears throat> or whether I haven't missed something and it's missing. Uh, no, you're correct, Councillor People. Um, it isn't in the report. Um, it, in fact, the, um, the wider finances that aren't in the report. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious that it deals with an individual, so I'm not asking you for a figure now. But I think, Chair, it means this report's not quite complete because there is actually a cost which isn't included. And, and therefore, in terms of going to Cabinet, I would make a recommendation that the missing costing for the staff change is included in whatever way is appropriate bearing or because I'm conscious that normally if you have a single individual apart from the chief exec who's legally exempt because they're our most expensive employee um, that you we don't normally include something that says if it said to employ a x then usually we put a figure in of what we think it's going to cost and if it's an existing individual where we extend the contract, clearly it's their salary and on costs. So, and it wouldn't take a great deal to work out. Well, if you take the normal on costs, then you know how much they're being paid. So I, I think we, if we could make an additional recommendation that the missing costing for the member of staff is included in the paper that goes to cabinet, then I, I'd be satisfied with that. I'm not, I'm not wanting to scupper the whole paper. I'm just saying it's not complete as it's come to us tonight. Thanks, Simon. I, before I comment, go on, Anna. Yeah, so yeah, we'll make those available in the Cabinet report. In fact, we've got um, a much more comprehensive set of finances which we've worked through to go into Cabinet. And just to say that, that what we're proposing and all the, all the different components here, um, they're all within existing budgets, so we're not asking for any more money to achieve any of these different things. What, what, we've, what we've done, what, what Matt's done, is... Um, pull different pots of money across the service so it, again it was quite splintered in the way that it was divvied up for different projects etc Chair, um, Chair, I've got no problem with that pulled it but I'm a bit concerned Sorry. that we're, we're being just told that there's Sorry. a more deep just let Anna finish please thank you I'm, I'm making the point Chair I, I, that I know it's a statement that we're not getting the whole thing Simon, that's Simon, going to cabinet Simon you've just interrupted a little bit I'd just rather let Anna finish her point and then I'll come back to you um, just to say that we've pulled all these different pots of money that we already have to do lots of different things within the service and when pulled together it will finance everything that we've we've put forwards here including the additional costs associated with resources so that's all that's all in there thanks thanks Anna Simon well just make the point chair this is scrutiny we should get the full report you make a valid point. Yeah, but I've made it for ages, but it doesn't happen. Make a valid point. I have. And, and Thank and you. That can, be, that can be a recommendation. Or what, the cabinet start allowing us to see all the figures? <laughs> no, no, but seriously, Chad, we've had this on a few occasions where we've been told that we got the rough version of a report or the incomplete version of a report. Well, we should get the complete version. I mean, I'd hesitated so far to mention the number of um, language errors in this report. You know, I mean, really shouldn't come to us with that many errors in it. It's. It but I'm, I'm mentioning it now, you, just to you make, make that. You make a fair point that we should get a complete report, and I think. Thank I you, think, Chair. I think, I think yes, that should be heard. Yeah. When it, when it's my turn, I'll ask another question. Thank you, Chair. Anna, do you have any further comments? Or? Only to say, in terms of the finances, whilst it hasn't been pulled into the finance section, we have listed out in each part of the report what we intend to spend on each component. So we do say quite clearly 40k for tourism, 15k per annum on the DMP for however many years. So it is actually I embedded mm. in the report with the exception of the resourcing because that is obviously or would be an exempt item and... I don't think we particularly wanted this meeting to be an exempt meeting for that one small detail. 
So I think it's kind of there. It's just perhaps not in a, in a finance section, which just bullet points it down. But it is all within budget. And I think that's the key point is we're not asking for any more money. We can resource it with what we've got. Thank, thanks, Anna. Yeah, thank I you. think I think it is a I think it is worth making making the point that I think I think there is a fine balance between as a scrutiny committee getting the information we need to do good scrutiny and and having all the information that or detailed information that would make us have to do this meeting in private and I, I'm a big fan of trying to do these meetings in public as best we can so uh, but I, I, th I think Simon makes a fair a fair comment um, Simon you have a further question yeah thank you chair um, I think the fact that I'd provided you with an argument for why it shouldn't be in there isn't to be thrown back at me um, so what what I was going to ask chair was that um, there's several references in the report to using the grant money and as I've said, I've got no issue with the, the idea of grants and focus um, to achieve a diversity that is not that is about heritage, hospitality, and food. Now, I did visit one local computer store in the town centre this morning, um, and there are a number of solicitors, but I'm struggling to think of what businesses we've got in the town that aren't well apart from the odd shop that's left, um, that are not food, hospitality, or um, whatever the third one, what did I say? hospitality, food, and, and um, leisure. So I'm a little concerned that we appear to be saying that we'll use the grants to make it more like it already is, which I'm, st I'm struggling with. Because to me, diversity would mean, well, we're going to try and bring in some new businesses. Now, I'm, I'm very happy to see that we're looking at something that, that isn't tr just about startups. Because last time we did a startup thing, we had one bid. Now, that turned out to be a really good one, and that's great. But where will we get diversity? There is, or are, sorry, so many food outlets hospitality outlets and leisure outlets in the town centre that I, I, I'm not sure how you do it. Now, OK, perhaps I've forgotten, Chair, the massive number of Turkish barbers, um, which previous portfolio had commented on the number that had suddenly sprung up in the town. I think it's four or five in the central street area alone. So where what is this is going to do? Because I would have thought that the real focus would be on saying we're trying to get businesses other than those into the town centre so as to diversify what is on offer. Do you see what I mean? Because, I mean, why would anyone open another pub in the town centre? Why would anyone open another f food one if you think about the level of competition is already there? So if, we, if we're going to make it really work, should we be trying to find different businesses to come into the town centre? Thanks, Simon. Uh, I, I'll just bring you in a second, Matt. Just a comment on that. Um, I, I personally, I, I think there's. We we have seen, for for instance, new pubs open in in the, in the town centre of a different style to perhaps what we've been used to before. So yeah, agreed. That was a very a, good option. A, yeah. Um, so. I think those things are happening. Um, I'm sure Matt can 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 perhaps provide some 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 better answers that, than I can. My issue, Joe, was really that if it's diversity, then it shouldn't be replicating what we've got. That was my point. Not that there couldn't be a new individual outlet of a different type. I'm just I'm just asking whether we're saying that we want the town centre not only to do what it does now which is consist largely of those three categories but actually to consist on them even more that's my point Matt yeah if, if I may um, so there's a there's a number of um, considerations to take there so so I think yes um, first and foremost if you if you look at things then in terms of numbers and provision there's, that you know there is there is a certain amount of types of you know similar types of 
end use, I think is the best way to describe it, such as a pub. So would the answer, would we would we focus solely on um, those types of business? I think that was the, one of the first questions. So no, obviously any business that wants to come to, to, to Tamworth or start up or expand would be supported. However, you know, what, what is very clear and what's very clear is particular feedback from the different work streams we've had done through the Welcome Back Fund, the Reopening High Street Fund, and we had some work done by the local government association, is the, the need to drive footfall into town centres through those spe uh, specific uses that we've said. So in terms of food and hospitality, um, leisure and heritage, and that, you know, that's, that is quite a broad brief. That could be anything from escape rooms down to pubs, down to um, you know food places so I think I think um, the question you quite rightly raise uh, councillor people is is then you know we've got a number of these outlets but I, th I think what Tamworth is particularly limiting is choice within those particular outlets and then diversification within those types of use so at the moment and I think we can take a good example of the of the, the local sort of real ale uh, culture that has developed. And I think that's a really strong point. You know, certainly me growing up in Tamworth um, in the late uh, <coughs> 90s um, was, um, uh, showing my age now, you know, there was, there was, there was <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, he's reminded us all of how much younger he is. That's what he's trying to do. But, but there was, you know, at the time, there was quite a buoyant nightlife and then, you know, things changed. What's been really exciting to see is that the addition of one or two um, businesses has then led to competition and to choice. And I think it's really important that what happens is then these other businesses, and we've seen another two open in the past six months, you know, they have actively chosen in a competitive market, therefore with those two open. So I think first and foremost, I would say that there is a clear, um, the, the more successful places that have adapted across the town centre have focused, um, across town centres across the country have focused on these sorts of activities that bring people in. I think, so whilst we do have a number of, um, a number of similar providers in terms of title, we know from ourselves, from our users, uh, from, um, the, from certainly the residents of Tamworth that particularly there's a weakness in the family food market in Tamworth Town Centre. You know, there's a particular lacking there of a family friendly um, place that people can eat comfortably that isn't a pub. Now that isn't to say there isn't places that are, but there could be there could be more. Likewise, um, you know, within within the, the sort of um, pub um, areas we're seeing a certain you know swing to real ale and that sort there is still an opportunity you know as you were seeing in other town centers um for more um diversity in terms of offerings from other countries that's quite popular at the moment in terms of you know um you're seeing lots of scandinavian restaurants um open in sort of um cities you know fine dining is another option um you know so i think i think what this represents the opportunity is to diversify and actually it's quite clear both from you know national patterns and from local patterns that what people want is experience and things that they can enjoy as a family and i think i think tamworth is developing i think it still has a long way to go but i think what this grant fund will try and do and you know hopefully with the involvement of, of councillors is, is try and then really put the money in the businesses that are going to make the most difference um, you know and, and not just ones that will continue doing what they've always done and I think that's an important factor and I think there'll be involvement obviously um, in the process on that so you know it'll be a competitive process and I think I think it's important to have a mixture of indigenous businesses growing but also new businesses come in that challenge the status quo and push people to do better and I you know I'd certainly say without naming names there are a number of businesses in Tamworth that have gone on to push that status quo and have been very successful and I think um, and I think I personally would like to see more of that um, as well as so the existing businesses grow as well so I hope that helps Simon Th thanks, thanks. Chair, just, it's just not what it says in the bullet point the bullet point says diversification of business types so if if it said to encourage the utilization of the town center with a focus on I'd agree entirely what I'm saying is it says we want to diversify the businesses we're not diversifying the business types if you have a different restaurant what you are doing is giving real choice and I, and I do think though and I would just I agree with what Matt said about families 
But what I would say is that's a challenge then to some of the ones outside the town centre who are catering for families mm -hmm. because they are not as tightly constrained by parking or by you know um, the amount of space they can have outside and and so on so you know that that's something i would be worried but my my key point is only that this says diversification of business types it's not the business types we're looking to change it's the competition and the the offer that that's changing it's that it's the way the bullet, the bullet point several times says diversifying types and I'm saying, but it's actually reinforcing the types. But what you want, as Matt has outlined, is a wider choice within those types. That's what I'm. That's all. That's the point I'm making. And if 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 we if we could go on and talk about it, I'm not worried. If the report doesn't say quite what it means, I've been on the council long enough to know it's not the first time, um, and I'm I'm quite happy to leave it at that. And that's the only point I'm making is I don't think the report expresses what I think all of us would agree entirely with the officer is what we're trying to get to. That's all I'm saying. OK. Uh, I think Anna wants to, to make some um, points. Well, I was just going to say that, you know, the town centre has to adapt and change. It is not what it was five years ago or ten years ago, and it will never go back to that. So we have to stop thinking that we're going to get the town of town centre that, that we've all grown up with. It's never going to happen. What will be a diversification is a, an, um, less reliance on our retail because of the online shopping, etc. And and what Matt was saying is, is absolutely right. People will come into Tamworth for those things that you cannot do online. You're going to get your hair cut, you're going to get your nails done, you're going to have a coffee with your friends. It's that social side, um, which is why um, that sort of uh, category of um, hospitality, leisure, etc. That's why there would be a focus because that is genuinely th they're going to be the reasons why people use Tamworth Town Centre. It's going to be very different in the next three, four, five years, it's, it, and it's not going to be somewhere you necessarily go shopping as your primary reason for going in. It's going to be going and doing all those other little bits and bobs that require that face-to-face -face interaction, and that's what we need to support. I feel, and that's why I think we will get the diversification because. It won't be the retail centre that we know. It will be, yes, retail, but lots of other things too, which are very different. Mm. Th th thanks, Anna. Uh, I, I, I know you're waiting to come in, I Andy. I just, and absolutely. Um, Steve, I think you just want to make a quick point. Yeah, just uh, a bit of a comment. I'm from Erdington originally. The high street there died years ago. <laughs> Pardon? No, this one hasn't died quite yet. It's what you call it, it's died and it's come back, but it's not come back as what I remember. All my parents, it, it especially annoys my parents, it doesn't look like it used to. But Woolworths went, Boots went, all the major names went. Then some of the other s smaller shops started to go. Technology changes, video shops go. Even now, computer game shops, they're disappearing because they're no longer required. It's, the, the high street has, managed to adapt and change what it's done is you can now go walk down that high street and you can get four different types of chicken you've got afro-caribbean you've got your traditional fish and chips or, or chicken and chips <laughs> uh, yeah and you've got um this what you call it i haven't tested all of these but there are quite a few different places you can get chicken and chips um uh, but that's the sort of thing that we're facing. Now, one of the pluses, by bringing in um, more uh, things that we're not familiar with, such as Afro-Caribbean cuisine and that sort of stuff, it brings in other stuff. One of the things that I noticed when I was doing the immigration side is that Tamworth doesn't really cater a lot for halal. Now that may be one thing that comes to the high street, so then you'll have uh, restaurants that specialise in doing halal food. And then you'll also get shops that specialise in other things off that, such as sweets, or maybe clothes, or that sort of thing. That, this is something that we're reliant on. We need to diversify, we need to, to widen the appeal so that we offer something different, and it, it's not going to be what we had before. I mean, I'd love to see Radio Shack come back. Oh. The amount of times I used to wander around that as a kid, I used to love it. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was Tandy Radio Shack. Oh. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, and uh, Maplin's Maplin's has disappeared from Erdington as well, and that's only recently gone. That's being redeveloped. So everywhere's facing challenges and finding ways to overcome. We're at the point now where our high street is in in peril, and we've identified that, and we're taking a actions to address it. We're planning on redeveloping the town centre and changing the focus. But what we need to do is change with it and accept some of the changes that are going to come, whether we like it or not. But uh, that's me finished on that one. Thank, anyway, thank thanks, you. Thanks, Steve. Um, Andy. Thank you, Chair. It's, it's been a while. It's been a while, I'll be honest. I've grown a beard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say now. Uh, no, no, I'm joking. So, uh, so. Yeah, I think it goes back to my original point of it being a loose remit in the report. I think had the report been um, a lot better, I absolutely um, sympathise with with what council people said. The report is fair. Uh, the, re the report is is, is fairly poor um, in its in its context and its detail, and I think that's led to the discussions that we've had tonight. If we'd have been presented with a better report, maybe we could have cut down some of the discussion tonight. So I I, I do sympathise with with uh, council people on that. Um, I hear a lot of people saying, well, the town should have this, the town should have that. Ultimately, what, what drives the businesses that are in the town centre is supply versus demand. Mm -hmm. if, there's a dem if, if there's a demand there for a product, there'll, there'll be somebody who, who will be ready to supply it. And, and, and I think, Anna, you alluded to that yourself um, in, in, in what you were saying. Um, I think absolutely the focus must be on a strategy. And if this... if, if if, the, if what, we're, what we're trying to build here builds that strat uh, strategy, that would be good. Both a tourism strategy and some form of economic strategy. But I think that we risk, because of the loose, flexible remit, we risk venturing into the realms of trying to um, push the supply and demand and try and, you know, we, we need this business in the town and that business in the town. Well, that will come. If we help businesses come to the town, that diversification and, and actually that that you know that that, that the, the the mix of businesses will come through supply versus demand people want it will be here i've always been amazed why we haven't got a thai restaurant it's probably because not many people want a thai restaurant i don't know um so i think that this this is why it's better that we have full and uh, full and better reports uh, i think that's the major point i'm making if we can if if that report would have been given to me in my day job i'd have probably chucked it out the window and told somebody to go away and do a better job. We need better reports. I think if we're going to if we're going to scrutinise and know the facts and the figures all up front, that's what we need. So I, I, I do stand with uh, with councillor people in in a recommendation on on better reports and being a little bit more transparent with um, with, with what what we're supposed to be scrutinising. It's hard to scrutinise something you that, that you you can't see that's not there. Okay. Thank you. Th thanks, Andy. <laughs> Simon. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to ask a further question um, with regard to the grant process. Um, quite understand that we're going to do the grants quarterly, tidy my grants committee meetings, fine, um, with a maximum of a minimum of two and a half thousand, maximum of ten per business. Now, my concern is that that then relates back to the total for each year which I think was £25,000. So if a business can get 10000 that's two and a half businesses in, a quarter, in the year that will get a grant. And that's probably enough, different businesses, probably, but it does tighten it. However, it then says, unless there's an exceptional reason to make a larger grant, and earlier on, it makes a reference to SMEs and then says, or if exception. And I'm a little worried that what could happen is a chain will come along and say, we'll put one of our chains into your town. And in one sense, we'd all be going, thank goodness, because we've been overdue one of the big chains of restaurants and things for a long time. But they will then look to get the absolute maximum and that will take out the yearly allocation in one go. And I'm just concerned that 
we need some provision in there that would say, you know, if a big chain comes in and can clobber us for 15 grand because we think it's worth it, we have some flexibility to adjust the availability of grants so that a small local business that happens to bid at the same time isn't disadvantaged. That That's my, my point. Uh, it's about the mechanics of it. And I'd like some reassurance that the flexibility is there in what we approve tonight, if we approve it, to say, yeah, we can cope with that and we won't let a small business that's looking to take on two local people um, get lost just because a big chain has arrived at that, that moment. Thanks, Armin. Matt, have you got some yep. reassurance? Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, I think, um, you know, this this report has been in the works in various iterations for like the last six months. So, um, Councillor Peeper, you're absolutely correct. And actually, we looked at it from the other perspective. You know, the first perspective was protecting and giving it to small businesses. Yeah. But, and actually, so conversely, we've looked at it the other way from you. Um, we didn't, we haven't put this in until recently because what we didn't want to exclude was, for example, if there was a really significant opportunity that represented massive impact for the town and they needed, you know, there was, there was something that came in that said, right, make or break, we're going to come and create 100 jobs, but we need that 25K now, then we didn't want to exclude that. Our priority will be through, um, cap, um, sorry, I, I didn't get it the right technical term, I think it's, Grants subcommittee, cabinet grants subcommittee, will be to prioritise smaller businesses who need it. And you, but we have put the, that in as a catch-all in case and just in case we need that flexibility because what we've always found is we're doing these grants and all these business support schemes is you need a level of flexibility because you know, as Councillor Cooper, um, as you've said, you never know what's going to come in, and mm. you know we're fully open. You know, certainly, you know, from our perspective... Matt, can I just ask you, I asked you to confirm that if they came in together, yep. that you could deal with it on this scheme of delegation? The answer is yes. Fine, that's why we did it. Is that OK? Does that answer Great, the thanks, thanks, Matt. Um, Sorry, Chair, but I thought if I clarified the question, it might save a, a further uh, amount of time. It's fine. I, I have a question when you chair to... Uh, right, on. Call, right, OK. Um, I've just gone to the, uh, I've tried to stick to the process, uh, make it easier to follow. Um, I'm a little concerned that we've got a environment, it says at the end, legal and risk implications background. Well, I could accept that there's none there. Equalities implication, I would have thought that we should be aware that SMEs, unlike big cunt, companies tend to be there's a greater proportion of women um, and therefore there's actually an opportunity here for us to encourage women in business um, and environment and say sustainability including climate change I think we, we should have something in there that says that businesses that fit with um, reducing carbon ca uh, carbon uh, footprint or are helping to bring about net reductions in carbon usage um, would would be given you know an opportunity to demonstrate that or to give them some I'm just concerned that we're getting into this thing where to make a report safe we say there's no implications and and I'm just saying hey shouldn't we be looking for opportunities to move our agenda forward through these schemes so that there's something there that says if you fit a greener future, you know, we're more likely to support you. Thanks, thanks, Simon. It's, it's an interesting point, actually. And yeah, we, we you know, the, the climate change agenda is within all cabinet members' portfolio portfolios, and it would be it would be kind of nice to be able to to add something in there. However. If we prioritise a green business, I don't know how technically if that if we if we if we can we can promote, but I feel that's as far as we can go. Uh, Chair, I, I wasn't suggesting we'd add to the report, but perhaps 
a recommendation that officers give greater thought yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's too easy for the council to say all reports will in future contain an environment and sustainability implications element and then for everybody put none because then we're not actually moving it forward and the danger as was outlined at uh, full council would be that if it's in everybody's portfolio it's also nobody's to champion but I think if every portfolio holder makes a contribution, we actually move forward. So I, I was just noting for tonight that in it would be good to see these things come forward with some reference. And the point about equalities is actually, I, I accept there's no implication as in we're not going to discriminate, but actually opportunities across the West Midlands, SMEs contain far more women and far more members of ethnic minorities than big businesses in terms of their leadership. That's That's been statistically shown at reports to the, the combined authority. So I'm, I'm just saying, you know, by encouraging SMEs, we're actually doing a good thing because we're, we're giving more people a chance that aren't already in the corporate ladder. So, you know, equality's implication, whilst there is no direct one, by encouraging SMEs, we are encouraging greater diversity in business leadership. Yeah, great. You know, let's say so, because it's actually something really positive. Th th <coughs> thanks, Simon. I think I think I think actually it's a it's a it's a point well made, and I'd I'd welcome any feedback from maybe portfolio holder on 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 that comment, or would you rather refer deeply? <laughs> One point that I made to Matt when I first took over the portfolio and read one of his reports that commented on the um, entrepreneurial spirit of the people of Tamworth. And I pointed out that we have a college that educates a lot of people in uh, ha ha hairdressing and beauty care. Yet one of the biggest growths we've seen recently is a number of Turkish barbers that have just popped up from virtually nowhere. And those individuals have come from outside of the area. So it's what you call it, we are open to, to diversity and we do encourage it because those Turkish barbers wouldn't be there unless there was a demand for them. Mm. And also, have we ever given them any advice? No. They've not actually needed it. So they've come here and they've flourished. Plenty of people outside of Tamworth see opportunities here. Like I go back to the, one, uh, the chap from North Warwickshire, we both went to school together. So he's come from Erdington, he's moved to Tamworth, he's opened up, well, he's running his business from North Warwickshire and then moved that to Tamworth because of the support he gets and because of the work that Matt and his team do. That's why he's in Tamworth now. So it's what you call it, they do do something of value and they do bring something to this town and we are open to diversity so I'll, that's my bit thanks thanks Steve um, other questions comments Simon one other thing chair um, with regard to the grant funding um, I had a meeting I think with yourself and Matt as part one of the people who uh, during the Covid lockdown when I was attending cabinet, famous phrase, um, <laughs> uh, to uh, to help with the dive, the grant process and looking at the second or third stage grants after the initial flurry. Um, now Tamworth administered them very fairly, as the audit report has been very good. However, some uh, there were one or two uh, grants paid in Tamworth to organisations which nationally are being investigated so it's not what Tamworth did it's the fact that the national chain is 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 under investigation for the claims it made which obviously covers Tamworth and everywhere else that they made a claim um, so could I just ask that the committee add a, a recommendation that no organization currently being investigated by HMS HMRC over COVID grants is eligible for a grant because I think that's then saying to those who played fair and did things properly that there's an advantage. You're actually at the front of the queue when the next set of grants come out. So that would be a recommendation I'd like to remove, Chair, as and when we get to recommendations. Th 
thanks, thanks, Sami. Um, any further questions or comments from from members of the committee before we move to any recommendations? Okay, Simon, I'm going to bring you in as I think you've you've made a couple of potential recommendations. So, um, as as I've not forgotten. and thoughtful to the one member of the opposition available <laughs> um right let me just sorry chair i had the, my screen went blank and i had to reopen the the agenda so that i could get to the um original recommendations that's fine i mean um, we, we have i'm there now so okay. um so where it says uh, recommendation one um i was proposing to committee uh, that we um, authorise one year so that it's reviewed in year two rather than year three. Um, so it would mean, it would say for financial years 2022 20, 23 and then delete and 23 24 with delegated authority given to the director, etc., uh, on extending the contribution into financial years. 2023 to 25 so it just changed the dates of the authorization um, and uh, that um, effectively there would be an additional recommendation regarding the um, ineligibility of any organizations currently being investigated by HMRC over COVID related um, claims so so and that that does pick up very much on change rather than local businesses so from my point of view i think it it fits very nicely with the report but it just penalizes those national companies who have perhaps not behaved as well as they might have done um, because i think the original list was wider so the ones remaining under investigation are if you like the more you know the the cases where it's got beyond an initial question to a specific actual investigation by HMRC over the paperwork submitted or the okay. the figures used or whatever so it's it's at that serious stage of an HMRC now so those are the two uh, the amended to uh, number one and an additional fourth recommendation Th thanks Simon uh, yeah I, I note that the these are recommendations for us to note um, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy totally happy to take take that to to cabinet as 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 an, an amendment to that first I do, one. I do need a second yet chair absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and indeed and a I vote may, <laughs> and i may well be going to second that but uh, i just wanted to ramble on a little bit first um and then we can add that 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 other recommendation and um and i'm quite happy to second second those and um all those in favor on block thank you so that they're, they're both moved um, and therefore um, chair do we now move a substantive approval of the amended ones well we can't we, we, well we can remember I've been trained for years in this sort but of stuff I don't see it as a, an, as a necessary thing to do okay no I just wanted to make sure Jo had all that she needed as to whether everything had been that. approved yeah that was fine no, that, they're, that's they're, all I wanted to check chair <laughs> okay so thank thanks very much steve matt anna for for uh, for presenting the report i we've not given you too hard a harder time but i think it's been very constructive so uh, you're 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 happy to to leave now or if you so wish to hear our, <laughs> our further steve did you want to say something yeah um as I've said to you previously, I always look forward to coming to scrutiny. Um, I mean, I've been on cabinet a while, so it's you. It's I don't interact with everybody as often as I'd like to, and coming to scrutiny gives me that opportunity. And especially after just taking over a new portfolio as well, uh, I would have hoped you'd waited <laughs> until I'd finished. <laughs> um, I've listened to what you've got to say, and some points have been made. Um, 
and I will be taking them on board as we go forward. Um, I might come back to you about the grammar one. <laughs> uh, Chair, if I just say, Paul Varela, there's a number of extra words in the document that they could probably do. So, that. you know, where it says upon and on and into and to, I, I'm just saying it is tidying up, it wasn't the. The, the grammar, I think, largely revolves around how one uses capital letters to create new things like town centre fund. So I, I, I wasn't going to argue with that. But can I just say, Chair, because I'm conscious the officers are, are ready to leave, and I don't want to say why, because that wouldn't be right, but can I just say how pleased it, I've been to see Matt with us tonight. I think he's worked incredibly hard in that portfolio over a very difficult period of time. Um, I know when I was involved in those meetings over grants and grant funding um, how important it was that not only was it carefully checked by the benefits and other teams that were doing that bit of it but also that it was directed to those that actually fitted the criteria because without that we'd have been pulled up you know it was really important and I, I would just like to take this opportunity as I had an opportunity to see it to thank him publicly for the work of he and his team in delivering what was an incredibly complicated part of the COVID support programme. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Steve, but I didn't want them to go without having heard that. No, th thanks for that, Simon, and, and we'll we'll minute that. Those those thanks. Thank you. I'll be honest. You can I'm now you can now go. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Um, You've heard the good bit, now you just got to listen to the portfolio holder, so it's, it's up to you whether you stay. I'll be honest, this is a very difficult topic because, I mean, I've only just come to this portfolio, as I keep saying, but they're having to predict what the high street's going to be like in yeah. two or three yeah. years' time and trying to influence that. And that's very difficult to do. Very few people have got it right or very few other councils have got it right. And it's... It's something that we're working very hard towards, and your input is valued. And I do actually look forward to coming back again. I was, I did actually tell Simon that I'd like to have been here for the curtain wall mm. one. Um, but thank you for your time. Your comments have been noted, and it's we will look to uh, bear that in mind for the future. But also bear in mind how difficult this is going forward to trying to get this right. And it's one of the reasons why we do value your contribution. Thank you very much. Chair, can I just ask that in the action plan, we have got a note at that point about the method chosen for distributing castle leaflets? The one yeah. that we keep picking the cheap option. I, I'm sure I'm sure officers have, have got that noted. Thanks. Yeah, no, it's only because it's a very practical thing and it could easily be sorted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the trouble... Chair, chair, joking apart, that's effectively what we've bought into at the moment is somebody going around it, it, and, and actually that's not what we want. Mm. Okay, Th thanks, thanks all, and we'll 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 cr we'll crack on. I'd I'd get up now, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. Okay, um, we're on to uh, item eight, which is our work plan. Um, and I was going to just dwell a little bit on this and where we'd where we'd got to, and because I think there's there's a, there's a number of topics that perhaps um, we've completed, ones that perhaps have have, have dropped off. So, looking to March, which is our last meeting of the new municipal year, um, we've got a community safety partnership plan. Um, I think we should be uh, getting a waste management update, actually. Um, we've got committee's report I say it's my report but it, uh, I say it as a committee's report um, for the year we've got a future high street fund update 
And we've also got a reset and recovery item on Marmion House regeneration. We've got a big meeting coming up. Um, but I think we've got to do all those items. I think they're, they're, they're all valid, important ones. And I, I'm, 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 I'd rather not put any of those off until um, post-election time. And I think we're going to struggle to get anything in in April. So I think we've got a heavy a heavy meeting coming up. Um, so any comments on that? Chair, if I may, I, I think one of the issues I've noticed on the reset and recovery, and particularly with Marmion and House, um, is that the officers tend to speak for about 25 minutes in the hope that, you know, the members will just be quiet at the end of it, which has singly failed in the in the case of some of us at least. Um, but so. but, but I, do, I, do, I do think it's a bit of awkward because we had one meeting which was sandwiched before it went back to scrutiny. We had one meeting that was sandwiched in at five o'clock. We started, I think, two minutes past five because of somebody waving in or out of the team's meeting. The officers stopped speaking at 5.28. Mm. And bearing in mind that we were all due in another meeting at six. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the cabinet were taking part and, you know, they're like for waffling on. Um, it it really, you know, between the officers taking as long as possible and the cabinet member taking as long as possible. So I do wonder whether we've got to say that, you know, in the light of this heavy agenda, five, ten minutes max yeah, yeah. as an introduction. It's good. It's a, yeah. Um, it, yeah, I think that's valid. Um Yes, yeah, so you've got four agenda items, you're right. Absolutely. I, I mean, I do know the Community Safety Partnership Plan has it's generally been quite a big item. That said, we did we did a lot of that yesterday. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've already spoken with Jo about that, and I think she's going to be fairly mm. concise. So, um, it's just certain officers have a tendency to talk for a long time. Sure, sure. And give long responses. Yeah, um, noted, and I'll I will have um, a and chat. Are you being confidential, sir? I mean, I'm I think thinking the Marmion House I think, one. I think that probably will. And yeah. will will the waste management have to be as well? I don't think so. Is it financial? I don't think so. But no. I'll, I'm, I've I've not received any information on that as yet. Yeah. I no, I'm only I'm you. only trying to imagine. Well, what would we be being told? Yeah. And are we going to get the usual? Well, if you know, um, but I th I think the the Marmion House one will almost certainly have to be. Absolutely. Because last time we were told there were various options, but we couldn't discuss them in detail yeah. because of the money. So I think this time, it's got to be in confidential. For, for sure. I think um, I'll 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 find out about the waste management. It's something that. We do an update as we agreed it was going to be a quarterly thing, but whether there's there is much of an update, I don't know as yet. So well, if if there isn't, chair, that would be the one to absolutely take so off, wouldn't we'll it? Because that'll leave a bit of room for the other three. I think I think if if uh, if committee will indulge me to to just sort it out, then uh, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so so all the work plan areas, um, we've got. I'll just pick up the travellers one because we did touch on that a little bit yesterday. Mm. Um, I, I've had discussions with with officers, and we've got a new. I think we've got a new officer in environmental health now. Um, uh, that's right. Um, and I, I think there's a number of there's a number of pieces in that jigsaw that needs to come together. And while I think something potentially could be brought to March, we've got too heavy an agenda to 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 add anything else on. I think, I th Chair, if I may, that what I took out of yesterday's meeting was that there's actually a county-wide yep. move to create a county-wide policy and the invitation from the PCC 
sorry, but I, I, I never know whether it's PC, FC, CFC. Yeah. So I'd just say PCC, <laughs> but I think everybody knows what I mean. That, that in that regard, he was inviting us to input into that county-wide process. So I think there'd be every reason to say it doesn't have to come to March. In fact, it would be good for the officer of concern, A, to get their feet under the table, yeah. B, to get a handle on what we're doing, and C, to find out what it is that is going on around the rest of the county. Because what, what, for those who weren't there, what he said was that they'd started a county-wide study because of the different areas and the different policies, and therefore that, you know, you could say some areas are kind of creating blankets which stop people going into their area, which only adds to the issue for everyone else. So the fact that they were looking at it county-wide, I would suggest that's where we link into first. Yeah, and, uh, and I think I think it's something I'd got in my head that perhaps it, 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 it's something for a June meeting, for instance. Um, Does he know the cabinet meeting? Do you know something I don't? Well, you know, you referred to Councillor Doyle being temporary and at my last meeting I was at, um, Councillor Clemens said to the leader if he's still the leader then. <laughs> so I, 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 I don't really know what's happening at such dizzy so I, heights. I leave you to... Dizzy heights of, of, of but, cabinet structure. But no, I mean, I, I think you're right. It can wait until the summer because we've got a better opportunity to find out what is going on. And... There is also, if you if you recall from yesterday's um, focus day, there was a portion of the sort of um, the council services side that that Joe Sands was going to present, and we just ran out of time. So I think I think that's something that perhaps needs to be a work plan item again for for maybe a June or or, or that type of time scale. So. As I said yesterday, Chair, it would be an ideal introductory mm. item for a new committee. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we've got um, a number of other items. There's an Amington Local Centre item that is. It's not on a. It's it's a, it's it's, it's an, it's yeah. No no no. It's it's something that's been highlighted to me from, from officers and I think maybe that's something that we need to sort of put in for for, for later on this year um, I think Chair I'll that refers to this new local do you remember the, the leader got confused as to which one we were talking about it's but the it's the one course. on the old golf, golf course, course. Um, rather than anything uh, else yeah. and the issue is relates to the provision of a shop or other community facilities Correct. which would lie I think between the two developments the Warwickshire one and the Tamworth one because they they're literally border each other and yeah. the school and so on so I think that's what it refers to yeah. so um, if that's yeah. any help it, it, it is thanks, thanks Simon a good reminder for me no, it's alright um, so I have my uses Town Hall I have on a list here because there's clearly some some thoughts for for town hall um, development, and I think that's something that we need to consider moving forward from a from a scrutiny point of view. So I think that needs to go on our on our work plan for a f some future meeting that could be could be whenever. Um, can I suggest that one goes perhaps to, I mean, we don't have the calendar yet, uh, but exactly. can I suggest it's not the first meeting, simply because whoever, the, whatever the portfolio changes are, then that will fall into someone's part of reset and recovery. Mm. And, and until they've had a chance to find out what is involved, I don't think anybody's quite sure where we're going on that one. Absolutely. It's, it's, I don't want to sort of... Schedule a meeting and say we'll do that then. It's I think it's just something that we need to be aware of. Stick it on the yeah, stick it on the work plan. Food for thought, indeed. Um, we mine is two, but we've got important work to do. Um, 
we have... Um, I had a sandwich before I came. Oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> but I also have to go to another meeting now, so <laughs> that's why I did it. I'll be quick. Um, lo local plan. We have a local plan working group. I think it's, again, it's something we should have a... To be decided, but I think it should. I think it should be something that we stick on our work plan for for, for future. Local plan working group meeting on the fourth. It, it is, yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> and I, and I, I'm in that. Uh, fortunate right, to be in that. They, they, they <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> um, in terms of removing some some items. Um, Garage sites has been on our on our work plan, and I think that came from some of the EV charging stuff, and maybe some some move to EV sites on old garage sites. And I, I feel we've moved on a little bit from that. Not to say that EV doesn't come back to the committee, because I'll keep banging on it. I want to keep but banging on sites about it. Was on there but Ga yeah, garage issues, sites was. W there were issues with the redevelopment. That was on corporate then, though. That was on corporate scrutiny. But then it came to us because it was now not on corporate scrutiny. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. but actually, it, it, what is there to scrutinise? Exactly. Today? Yeah. So I think we we we, we 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 got taxi licensing on there, and I and I I I, I think we were looking at reviewing the taxi licensing points okay. scheme weren't we mm. and i think we did that originally i'm not sure we've not gone back to we've it. i don't know if you can yeah chair we've never gone back to it we discussed it in the beginning mm. it w it was rolled out yeah. and it's never come back to us I is it working in my opinion no okay um because nothing really for me has changed from what i'm seeing um so i think it does need to come back to us okay but I think it needs to go to licensing before it comes here. Right. I don't know. But, um, we haven't had a licensing meeting, so mm. um, okay. I'm not quite sure why. I think I think that's fair comment and, and, and good information. And Chair, I think, I think Councillor Clement's on. made a very good point for why it should come back. Yeah. And I think we should plan for it to come back here because yeah. so far we've had the same thing on planning where there were issues as to whether they can make policy at the same time as be the judge if you like when it when somebody comes up for for questioning so i think if we plan to have it come here it'll actually happen yeah. and that that i think that's right yeah that's that thank you um and then we've also got this task group on waste management with lichfield district council that was going to go ahead um that's still on our work plan that i think just needs to come off because that's not going to happen now um through not through i mean we tried but if 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 other authorities don't want to play nicely with us then that's as i say chair the the member i knew in lichfield got the impression their officers had asked for the meeting and when i yeah. explained that we'd asked for it he went oh right but by that time i think people in lichfield had kicked up a you know why are we being told to scrutinize this to which the answer is you're not being told you've actually been invited yeah, but exactly but right. i don't think he's going to make any odds now and no. and the issue of that came to audit committee is is still not resolved anyway so it's not as though that bit of it can be discussed mm. so I, I think this is going to go yeah, off at, at least it's into when it matters somebody's yeah. going to have to come back but yeah. the proposed changes to the collection system are going to be much more relevant nearer the time. Yeah. And, and, and they're we, not before July or August, are and they? We, well, we've got our quarterly update, which mm. shows. That's why yeah. Um, okay. Item nine on our agenda is the forward plan. Um, I, d I don't think there's anything. I don't, anything I don't see anything that we can fit in, to be honest. That's mm. That's... As much of a, 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 a of an issue, um, unless anybody's got any any thoughts. Um, and then item ten is working group updates. Well, I've touched on the travellers working group stuff. We're going to get something come a bit later on in the year. There's so I think I think that's done. And then 
Um, I was hoping to get something from Ben, but I've not heard anything uh, with regard to the HEV drivers facility stuff. I don't know if there's a working group happened or, or not, but okay. Um, okay, so it's, I think, one minute past eight. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. I think it's been quite a good meeting, and um, I'll close the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Jim.